Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. It is time for our top GPU picks and a lot has changed since our last installment. Prices are quite a bit lower, so that's good to see, but there are a few new models as well. So we're gonna cover four categories, but before we do, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Be Quiet's new range of Silent Wings 4 high performance fans. Silent Wings 4 can not only be used as case fans, but are ideal for use on heat sinks and radiators, making them highly flexible thanks to a newly engineered design that reduces the distance between the fan blades and fan frame, allowing for maximum air pressure. Moreover, each fan's armed with a six pole motor featuring three phases for very low power consumption, less vibration, and crucially, virtually inaudible operation at regular speeds. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, time to get into the picks. And as usual, we'll start with the most affordable option and then work our way up giving a little bit of forward thinking buying advice as we go. Okay, so previously I tentatively recommended the Radeon RX 6500 XT for this category, but also kind of didn't recommend it. In short, I identified that, yeah, while it might be the cheapest brand new graphics card you can buy, you probably shouldn't. And if possible, look to the secondhand market as there are similarly priced but far better products available such as the Radeon RX 570, the 5500 XT, or the GeForce GTX 1650 Super. As it stands, the 6500 XT still retails for up around $175 US, which is just an awful price given the performance and lack of features. The typical selling price of a secondhand GTX 1650 Super, for example, that's around $150. So that is still the approach we recommend you take for this segment. That said, if you have to buy new, the RX 6400 is typically a little bit cheaper. And while it's still quite awful in its own right, and it's even slower than the 6500 XT while sharing almost all of its drawbacks, there are some redeeming qualities. First of all, the 6400 is very power efficient. And as such, there are a number of single slot LP or low profile models that don't require external power. And therefore you can throw them in basically anything with a PCIe slot, making them very flexible. So for everyone after an LP single slot graphics card, the RX 6400 is a godsend, but for everyone else, the secondhand market is still your best bet. As we've just established, you're not really getting much for $175 US with the 6500 XT. So what do you need to spend in order to really enjoy today's games at respectable quality settings while also having enough headroom to be useful for years to come? Well, for that, the Radeon RX 6600 is now the go-to option in our opinion. And with several models down around $280 US, it is certainly a good value product. And it's also selling for less than the $330 US MSRP. There's quite literally no viable alternative from NVIDIA at this price point. Quite embarrassing that the RTX 3050 costs at least $330 US, despite NVIDIA claiming a $250 US MSRP. As we found in a recent 51 game benchmark, the RX 6600 is almost 30% faster while costing almost 20% less. And there really is no alternative to the RX 6600, whether that be new or used. So. It's a pretty straightforward pick, and while we weren't thrilled with the 6600 upon release, in the current market it has shaped up to be quite a solid deal with good availability. It's also worlds better than the 6500 XT, given it supports more than two display outputs, twice the PCI bandwidth, twice the VRAM capacity, hardware encoding, and AV1 decoding. Basically, it is a proper graphics card. It also absolutely wrecks the RTX 3050 for standard rasterization performance. So unless the GeForce GPU is at least 20% cheaper than the RX 6600, there is just no point buying it. So in short, if you have to buy a GPU right now, the Radeon RX 6600, we believe is your best bet. Now, if you're hell bent on buying an Ampere or RDNA 2 based graphics card, and you want even more performance than what the excellent value RX 6600 has to offer, what would be your best option? Well, in my opinion, that would be the Radeon RX 6700 XT, which at its original MSRP was actually quite a good value product that gave the RTX 3070 a run for its money. And today it can be had for just below the $480 US MSRP at $450 US. 
The 6700 XT delivers around 40% more performance than the 6600, supports full PCIe times 16 bandwidth, and increases the VRAM capacity to 12 gigabytes. So you're effectively paying a 60% price premium for around 40% more performance, which is why we recommend, if you can, go with the RX 6600 instead, especially with next-gen cards expected later this year. Then from NVIDIA, you'll be paying significantly more for the RTX 3070 as it starts at $500 US, which is the original MSRP, and then there's the newer 3070 Ti at around $700 US. So unless you're buying specifically to play games with ray tracing enabled, the 6700 XT is a far better deal at $450 US. Righto, so what about high-end shoppers? This is a tough one, and for months now, we've been recommending buyers avoid high-end GPUs and instead hold out by sticking with well, whatever they currently own, or if you have to buy, go with the RX 6600 and wait for next-gen GPUs. Now, there's a few reasons for this. Firstly, we've witnessed GPU pricing continue to fall month on month for several months now, and this has been well-documented by a number of sources, such as ourselves, thanks to Tim. For example, in May of this year, the lowest retail price for the RTX 3080 Ti was $1,200, then $1,000 in June, and now it's down to $930. That means RTX 3080 Ti pricing has dropped by 23% in the last three months, and we've seen a similar thing for all high-end GeForce GPUs. The RTX 3090 Ti, that's tumbled by 27%, the RTX 3090 by 25%, and we've also seen high-end Radeon GPUs fall in price. The 6900 XT has fallen by just over 10%, and the 6800 XT by 14%. So combine the fact that high-end GPU pricing is in free fall right now, and retailers tell us that they have boatloads of supply available, certainly more supply than demand, we anticipate the prices will fall further yet. Maybe not by a lot, maybe not massively, but they're still likely to trend downwards especially on NVIDIA's side for parts like the RTX 3080 10GB and then the 3080 Ti and higher. Not only that, but we're expecting the GeForce 40 series along with the Radeon 7000 series later this year. And I know we have heard rumors that next-gen GeForce cards could be delayed by as much as a year, but I believe that's a BS tactic to help move the mountain of GA102 silicon that NVIDIA is currently sitting on. We believe before year's end, higher next-gen GPUs will be here offering significant performance gains, and as a result, they should further push down pricing of current RDNA 2 and EMP graphics cards. And that really does make it difficult for us to entertain spending $1,300 US on an RTX 3090 or $1,500 on a 3090 Ti, and even the 3080 Ti at $900, it's a tough sell despite being well under MSRP. And in our opinion, the Radeon RX 6900 XT, it's not even that tempting at $850 US, though it does offer the most value of the current generation high-end offerings. So if you're not keen on holding out with a much cheaper RX 6600, and if you want something truly high-end from this generation, the 6900 XT is one of the better options. The GeForce RTX 3080 12GB is also an option, as quite surprisingly, it's a little bit cheaper than the original 10GB model, and for just shy of $800, it's cheaper than the 6900 XT while offering a similar level of performance. Basically, to make this a bit easier, I'd completely ignore the 3090 and 3090 Ti, along with the 3080 Ti, and then the 10 gigabyte 3080 and 3070 Ti, well, they're made pretty redundant by the 12 gigabyte 3080, which can be had for similar money. Then from AMD, the 6900 XT, 6800 XT, and 6800 are all viable options, Though I would ignore the 6950 XT as that's still, well, it's heavily overpriced. So, as is often the case, it's difficult to say what you should or shouldn't buy right now, and ultimately that will depend on you and your potentially unique situation. Of course, without knowing exactly what the future holds, it is impossible to say without a doubt what you should do, but we can at least help stack the odds in your favour. What we do know is that the Radeon RX 6600 is unlikely to get much cheaper over the next few months, and it's already quite affordable given what it offers. It's a solid 1440p graphics card that can play the latest and greatest games using modest quality settings, it's a great mid-range offering, and it'll certainly tide over high-end gamers for months to come. As I see, you stand to lose no more than about $100. Right now they're selling secondhand for at most $50 below retail on ebay.com, so there's a good chance you'll recover most of your money. 
an RTX 3080 Ti though, you could easily lose $200 or more before year's end, making it a much more expensive short-term investment, assuming that next-gen GPUs make a good step forward in terms of price to performance. The RTX 3080 12GB and 600 XT are more sensible options in my opinion that should see less of a price drop from this point forward, but it might be an unnecessary upgrade that could have been avoided had you just held out a little bit longer. And speaking of next-gen GPUs, there's almost no chance RDNA 3 and Lovelace won't sell out almost immediately, as this has been the norm for well over a decade now. But what will be interesting is what demand looks like two to three months after their initial release, and I suspect those who exercise a little bit of constraint will end up with a better deal, as that is often the case. And I suspect that's more likely to happen rather than missing out entirely, which is what happened for this current generation. But of course, time will tell. And again, without a working crystal ball, I can't say for sure what you should do, but at least know what I would do. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to become a Harbour Unbox community member, then we do have Patreon or Floatplane. Links for those are in the video description. You can sign up to either of those services and you'll get access to pretty much the same stuff. So that is our exclusive Discord server for Harbour Unbox community members. Tim and myself are active on there. Great community. Uh, we also do a monthly live stream behind the scenes content and Q&A. So if you're interested, check it out. But if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.